story is the way the human brain is wired. It connects facts with feelings like nothing else. Please welcome to the stage, Nick Harding. Very good. Excellent, thank you. And you're probably thinking, what is the story with that photo? Uh, it's a bad photo, but to be fair, it's not the photo's problem, it's my problem. I, um, how did I change from that to this? One word, keto. Uh, two words, a lot of keto. So uh, if you take one thing away from tonight and that's it, it should be try keto. And if that's the only thing you take away, that has been a terribly wasted night. So that's a bad thing. So developing culture through story. Story is an unfortunate thing because we tend to relegate it to fables and talk to the kids and just a bit of fun. It's the type of thing you talk about uh, around a campfire or the type of thing you have at the end of uh, Friday night drinks. But here's the deal. Story is the way the human brain is wired. It connects facts with feelings like nothing else. And that is the way you hack the human brain. Narrative has been bulletproof tested all the way through evolution, and that is the way human beings remember things. If you're a stats type of person, you might like to jot down this stat, 22x. Forget your entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley talk about 10x in a business. We're not talking 10x, we're talking 22x. That is the stat. If you take facts and figures and you connect them to story, you have a 22 times chance of remembering those facts and figures. If I tell you 10 pieces of information, chance of you remembering that, microscopically small. If I thread that through a story, through a narrative, the chance of you remembering that, 22 times larger. Story is the way that you get strategy to stick. Story is the way that you hack the human brain. And story is the way that you envelop and encapsulate your culture. If you want to change the culture, change the story. To get negative for a second, because I did a degree in history back in the day, there's a terrible quote from history that says, if you want to change the culture, if you want to invade a country, First, kill the storytellers. Because you kill them, they forget their heritage, their history, who they are, and then you can just bulldoze them down. So, story encapsulates culture. It encapsulates it by giving a concrete vision to the vision and values of what you stand for. It's an extraordinary thing. I'm sold out to story because it's super memorable. So let me tell you a story. Estee Lauder. Estee Lauder, to me, maybe perhaps not to the ladies in the audience who may know more than me, but when I first heard the name Estee Lauder, I assumed very exotic, perhaps French, but no. Estee Lauder is American, but she's deeply connected with the French because she was the first American ever to be known as a nose. What's a nose? A nose is a person who has the right to create their own perfume because their olfactory senses are so profound. And how did she do that? Well, she didn't do it through argument, because when she went to the French and said, here's my perfume, I'd like to sell it, they said, no, or whatever the French word is for no. I'm gonna go with no. They said no. So she said, please, and they said, no. And then she said, but seriously, please. And they said, no. Because they're French, and that's what they do. So what she did is she brought in a massive bottle of her perfume, and she went to the place where everyone sold perfume, and that was like the number one flagship store. She walked in and she said, for the last time, please sell my extraordinary perfume. And they said, no. So she said, oops. And then she dropped the bottle on the marble floor, and it shattered, and out came this glorious aroma. And it went everywhere, and they said, get out of our store, and she did. But before she did, she said, oh, by the way, um, that's my card if anyone wants to buy the perfume. And she left, 
And then guess what? The store smelt like her perfume for the next fortnight. And every third customer who came in said, that smells amazing, can I buy that? To which they had to say, <clears throat> no. After a couple of weeks, they're like, oh, screw it. Yep, she's obviously got her skills together. And they bought her perfume and she became French's, uh, France's first nose. Great story. But how can you tell a story that encapsulates the culture that you're, you currently have or you want to have? So let's shift it more into like a business mode. Easy. Roger Corbett used to be the CEO of a small company. You might have heard of it. It's called Bullworths. And he was on holidays once. He was at the beach wearing a you know, rip curl T-shirt and you know, Hawaiian shorts. And he saw a Woolies trolley. And it annoyed him. So what did he do? He walked over to it, picked it up, walked it 800 metres to its nearest Woolies. And he walked in and said, hey, called someone over. He said, this was left in the street. Oh, thanks, sir. No, no, no. <clears throat> This was left in the street. That's not good enough. You can't be doing that. We have a reputation. That is movable advertising. And we look bad leaving in the middle of the street. You need to make sure that we go out, we collect all our trolleys so that we are looking after our community. And they went, <laughs> pretty full on. Okay, thanks, random dude. Until one of them thought, actually, I know that random dude. That's the CEO. That story went viral through the whole of Woolworths. He didn't need to preach. He didn't need to give a sermon. He didn't need to command and demand that they should, you know, uh, treat where they do business really well. No, 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 no. That story went viral because it perfectly encapsulated their vision and their values. Yeah? That's what story can do. So my question to you is, what stories are you telling at work? What stories encapsulate your culture? No, actually, that, that was a question. That wasn't a rhetorical question. That was literally a question. So what we're going to do, I'd like everyone to stand up, please. If you could stand up, and I'd like you to choose between the, the two people. So let's uh, stand up and pair up. Uh, choose between the two people. Which of you is going to be red and which of you is going to be blue? So choose between the two, pair up. One is red, one is blue. All right, excellent. One is red, one is blue. This is what I'd like you to do. In a moment, I feel as though the reds are talking a lot and the blues are listening. Reds, shush, blues, thank you. What I'd like you to do now is take 30 seconds and we'll have red go first, because let's be honest, only an alpha type would go with red first. So we'll have the reds go first. You want to tell a story for 30 seconds about a leader who perfectly encapsulates the culture in your company. So it might be like Estelle Lauder. What is the culture of the company? They're innovative. They're bold. They, they push. That might be the type of story you tell about someone in your organization. It might be that the culture in your organization is more like uh, Roger Corbett, the CEO of Woolworths. And the culture is we need to be connected to the people around us, treat them with respect, and go full on. I'd like you to think, what could that story be? So, Red will go first, and in 30 seconds, I'd like you to tell a positive leadership story about the culture of your company that that person beautifully embodies. It doesn't have to be the CEO. It could be anyone in your company who's just done something where you think, you know what? That's us. That's our vision. That's our values. That is who we are when we're at our best. You got 30 seconds. But if you're blue, you got to listen carefully because your role is to give 15 seconds of feedback about the lesson you learned. Red tells the story of someone encapsulating culture. Blue gives them 15 seconds to say, what I heard was this. Make sense? Brilliant. Your time starts now. Thanks, Red. All right. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. So if you're blue, I would now like the blue person to feed back the lesson they learned. What did you learn about the culture from that story? You got 15 seconds. Your time starts now. Who beautifully encapsulated.
and five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, now we're going to play swapsies. So Blue needs to tell 30 second story about someone in your organization who beautifully encaptures, encapsulates your vision, your values, your culture. You got 30 seconds, your time starts now. And five, four, three, two, one. The other person has to tell you what is the lesson they learned from that. Your time starts now. I think, I think a lot of mine. And five, four, three, two, one. Fantastic. Let's take a seat. Let's take a seat. So if you felt as though you were flying a little bit blind with that and you thought, how do I actually tell a story in 30 seconds that deals with such big stuff? Well, luckily for you, here at Speaks Institute Corporate, we love our scaffolds, and this is the scaffold we use. It's just three parts. Set the scene, the big moment, the realization. So the question I have for you is this. Did your story do that? Did it set the scene quickly? I remember when. Did it focus mainly on the big moment? Just then, this happened. And did you hit the realization? I'd suggest the most important part of this one is the realization. That's when I realized. So think, did you find it easy if you were blue to tell red what the lesson was? Did you find it easy to tell red if you were blue what the lesson was? If you found it easy, they probably made it obvious. If you found it difficult, they may not have. If you follow this particular formula, you're going to find you can tell stories easier, better, in a more memorable way. And why is that important? Because culture is encapsulated by stories. You want to change culture? Change the stories you tell. Thank you.